Hi, I'm Milesy, and today I'm going to show you guys how to do something I've been doing an awful lot lately. And you've probably seen it on my Instagram or on my Facebook or other places, but I've been dyeing a lot of fabric. And I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it. It's a technique called marble dye. And basically it's, it's probably the simplest way of dyeing fabric. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time waiting for it. You don't have to do really anything special to it, and it's something that I actually kind of discovered by mistake once. But I'm going to show you how to do it with both your powdered dye and your liquids. And this is both a uh, Rip Brand dye. This has just been decanted into this thing. And you'll basically just need a couple of different things. You'll need your fabric, obviously, and you'll need something to put it in. And I have a variety of things I can use. I have a little glass bowl for smaller pieces of fabric. I have a big plastic bowl, which also works, and this is for the larger pieces of fabric. And there's also a stovetop method, and I have a couple of little pots and pans that I use just for dyeing fabric. And if you use something like this for dyeing fabric, you want to make sure that's all it's used for. You don't want to put food in these things. Even if you get them totally clean, there might still be something in there, especially if you use the powder dye. And that is one thing about the powder dye that you will notice is that it will get caught on your bowl or whatever you're using, tiny little particles, and that will wind up on the next thing that you dye. So if you're doing powdered dye, you might want to have a special container just for that and expect that in the future. So first we're going to use some powdered dye, and we're going to do black because I don't have any black in 14 count. And we want to take our bigger bowl because we're going to be using this big piece of fabric right here. It's 30 by 36 inches. And first we're going to just fill up our bowl and I have this big thing over here, I don't think you can see it, that's just full of water. So here we go. Now we have our little bowl of water and this water is salt water. The stuff that I have mixed over here is pre-mixed with salt. I just fill it up, put about a cup of salt, or salt into the entire jug and it's good to go. But in this case, when you fill up your, bar, your uh, bowl of water, you'll just want to dump a little bit of salt in there, and that helps to keep the dye from fading off of the fabric too much. It helps to actually fix it to the fabric. And now we're going to take our dye and just pour some in. About like that, and it's gonna make a big mess. And we have our special mixing spoon that food does not touch. And we're just gonna mix that all in, just like that. And there are some differences with the powdered dye and the liquid dyes that you'll see, and one of those is that the powdered dyes tend to be made up of a bunch of different colors. So you'll get flecks of other colors in here even if the bowl is brand new and has never been used. So the next thing we're going to do is take our fabric and we're just going to crunch it up as much as we can and get it as wrinkly and nasty as we can get it and into the bowl of fabric it goes. And we're going to get everything a little bit wet because this one will be going in the microwave and I'll be doing a stovetop one as well. But one problem that you can get with dyeing in the microwave is that sometimes you can actually burn the fabric so we want to make sure that the whole thing is wet and this fabric hasn't been washed it hasn't been pre-treated and that is exactly what we want from it so there we go it's in here and it's all ready to go and now we just have to apply heat to it so i'm going to take it across the room and put it in the microwave for about four minutes okay and now we're back and it's fresh out of the microwave and i don't know how well you can see on here but there are some specks of orange and blue and a whole bunch of other different colors in here. And that's just kind of how powdered dye works. And you see it a lot in the blacks and in the browns especially. But now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this and go rinse it out and let it dry. And in the meantime, I will bring back the bowl and show you how to do the liquid, which is pretty much the same, but we're gonna do it anyway. Okay, that one is now rinsing out in the other room. I don't think you can even hear it. It's pretty quiet. But we're going to do the same thing now, only with some of the liquid dye. And we have our bowl down here that has the salt water mixture. And there we 
go. We're just gonna pour a little bit in here. And pretty much like anything you're dyeing, the amount of dye you put in, in proportion to the amount of water you're using, will also determine how bright it's going to be. And we're just gonna give that a good stir. And we're gonna take our next piece of fabric. It's the same size as the other one. And this one we're gonna really twist up. And you can twist it, you can crumple it, you can do pretty much whatever you want. And no two pieces of fabric are ever going to look the same. So that's good and twisted and that's gonna look nice and we're just gonna put it right in there. Just like that. And get everything just a little bit wet so it doesn't burn in the microwave. There we go. And the reason that we're doing this and not submerging the entire thing in is the pieces that are above the waterline and the stuff that's caught down here in the wrinkles, that's not going to be as bright or as deep as the uh, flat edges that are down here that are under the water. So we're going to go ahead and put this one in the microwave now for four minutes as well. And then I'm going to show, show you how to do something else where you can do two colors or more with the same piece of fabric. Okay, I don't know how well you can hear me over the microwave. Hopefully it's not too loud. It's on the other side of the room, but this is what the black that we look, did looks like fresh out of the dryer. And it's still damp because it didn't go into a tumble dryer. It's just a spin thing that goes for about two or three minutes. There's some fluff on it, but you can see kind of how the colors look. And now we're just gonna put this out there to be ironed and quartered up and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so one other thing I'm going to show you while the other one is rinsing is I'm going to show you how to take a bit of fabric and I'm gonna use a smaller one. It's about half the size of what we've been doing. And I'm going to show you how to use two different colors on it. I've got this lemon yellow and this citrus orange and we're going to use those. And we're going to do this a little bit differently. And we're gonna fill up our bowl full of the water. And we want our bowl about halfway full of water, just like that. Let's put that about right there. That looks better, doesn't it? And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna crumple up our fabric real small. And we're gonna put it in the water first just to dampen it. Because I could do this on the stove, but frankly, I don't want to. And the reason I don't want to is because it takes too long and you kind of have to babysit it. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave and I'm going to dampen it just to make sure that it, the tops don't burn because I don't want the whole thing to go into the water. So now, I'm just gonna pour some of the dye in here. And you generally want to go from the lighter color first, then to the darker one. You can cover up the lighter color, you can't cover up the darker one. So if we start with the light one, we get it, we get a good baseline of color. And then we, from there, can go and put the dark in as we need it. So I'm gonna push this in, but not all the way. I'm gonna leave some white, just like that. And now this one's going to go into the microwave again for a few minutes. Not sure how long, it depends on how bright the yellow starts to look, but let's go put this in the microwave. Okay, now we're back, we have our fabric. It's still pretty wet, but that's exactly what we want it to be. And there's some yellow, there's some white, there's a little bit of everything. And we're just going to set that aside for right now and put in some of our orange. And in that goes. The yellow didn't quite turn out as bright as I would have liked, but that's fine. And now this time when we do the darker color, we don't want it to be quite as full as halfway because we still want some of the yellow to be showing up. So we're going to do the same thing here, just kind of crumple it up and it's a little bit easier this time. And in it goes. And this time we're not going to dump it all in because it's still pretty wet. I just rinsed it off, I haven't dried it. So now we have half of it orange and half of it yellow. And now we're gonna go put it in the microwave. And just a few quick little things I want to mention before we go on to the next part. When you're dealing with the microwave, make sure you use something to protect your hands because the bowl will be hot. And the same goes for the fabric when you pull it out. That will be very hot as well. 
So what I have found is the best way to get the fabric out of the bowl is to place your bowl in the sink and pour some cold water on it until it gets cool enough for you to pull out. Make sure that you're rinsing. When you rinse, start off with warm water or even hot water afterwards and then gradually go down to cold water and that will help reduce bleed immensely in the future. And then rinse uh, when you're rinsing it, you want to make sure that the color comes completely out and that the water runs clear when you're rinsing it out and that's how you know when it's time to dry it and you can throw it into a tumble dryer, you can use a spin dryer. I don't recommend washing by hand unless you have some way to secure the edges. My surging machine is broken right now and I hear you microwave, quit beeping at me. So I don't wash it in the washing machine, I do it completely by hand and it takes a little bit of time but it does get there eventually and then I spin dry it for about two or three minutes and that's when I finally iron it and cut it all up and iron it again. So that's ready to come out, we'll go rinse that out and show you what it looks like. Okay, and now we're done. Everything's been rinsed out and ironed as best as I can. And first I'll show you the black one, which here's some of it. It's kind of, it's folded up because it's enormous and I don't want to wrestle with it too much, but that's how the black one turned out. A little bit more gray than black. I probably could have put more dye in there, but I always have a really hard time with the powdered dyes, kind of figuring out how they're gonna go. Then this is the second one, the one that we twisted up and used that uh, wine color on. That one turned out really cool. I think, I don't know, I like them all. And then that last one that we did with the multiple colors, there's threads everywhere and I'll get those when I quarter these up. That's this one right here, isn't that one cool? And you could keep adding more and more colors to it. We could have even added red if we wanted, but I wasn't really in the mood to keep going. It's very hot, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time ironing these. But as long as you keep crumpling it up differently and putting it in about a third, maybe a quarter of the uh, bowl full of water with dye, you can get as many colors as you want. I typically tend to stick around two or three though, but they turn out really cool. And I'm probably gonna do a few more of these. I don't know, maybe. Not right now, it's very hot. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope some of you found this helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye. So earlier I was saying that you want to make sure you're not using your bowls that you're using to dye on food that you want to keep those completely separate. We have a completely separate microwave that I use just for dyeing flosses and fabric. We don't put food in this thing at all.